it is a very technically demanding track and, and the longer a day goes on, the more opportunity you've got if you've got a vision to see the lines, um, to make passes, to set people up. You know, there, there is a lot of opportunity there, but you know, when you think of how Brian is, you know, if you actually watch him, most of the time he's off the track anyway. So, you know, his little slide flat lines, they're normally not in the, the middle of the track, they're off the track. You know, he has these little sneaky lines. He's old school, he's very clever. So, um, yeah, and modern day tracks suit him because there's no chestnut, there's no rope. He can have them little wheeler lines wherever he wants. Yeah, I think if you, if you look back at the GPs over the years, like I said earlier, for any British rider, whether he be at the front, the middle or the back, you know, the, the enthusiasm of the British fans, the enthusiasm for them to push the British riders on, you know, that atmosphere really does, you know, get into the riders. And, you know, I, I've been there, come out of the Parc Ferme, and had all the air horns and people cheering me as I've ridden down to the start and I've sat on the start line um, and I've had tears in my eyes because the, 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 the whole day, you know, the atmosphere, the adrenaline, you want to perform for the people that were there. Obviously you've got a job to do, you're fighting a championship, you don't want to be seen to let everybody down. You know, in those days, the, you, you can't really explain the, the feeling that you have as a rider at the British Grand Prix when everybody's pushing for you. It's uh, an unbelievable experience. And um, if it was one that you could put in a can and sell, you know, it would be, you know, it would be a, make millions.